Welcome to the First Human Podcast. Today's guest, life coach and mentor, author, and I'll say international author and filmmaker, Elizabeth Monroy. So how are you today? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. No, thank you for coming on. Um, we did a little a little pre-show there. Um, what I first want to get into, um, obviously you've got a, a master's in mental health coaching. Um, super impressive. Um, I just want to talk because there's tons when I have a guest on and there's multiple things that I can talk about. I like to get some structure. So obviously the, the thing that we want to, I want to talk about first is I want to say you've got a great website. I sent you, I sent you that in a message earlier and it is great. Um, so let's talk about book, books. I believe you have five books and the one that is your most recent is Infinite Human. Am I correct? Yes, yes, yes. It's um, my baby. <laughs> it's, I, I've yet to read it. I'm glad you sent it me before the show. Um, unfortunately, occasionally when I have authors on, um, the, the books either get sent hours prior to the show, and I can read quick, but I had to have some dinner today. Um, <laughs> otherwise, I would have read it uh, or, or tried to as fast as I can. Um, but, what, but what I will do is, like I do with all other authors, is I'll, I'll we'll talk about it. Uh, I won't give too much away because I want to read it and then I'll plug it a couple of episodes, a couple of episodes later. I'm sorry I didn't send it to you earlier. You know, I just, a friend of mine who's actually from England said, oh, you need to get on talk shows and you talk about your book. So I posted it and then you connected with me and then a whole lot of other people. And then so I was like, okay, okay. And I made so many commitments and then I got really confused and I'm so glad you reminded me today. It's like, I'm going to see you at half past eight. I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> No, it's it's okay. I mean, I should have gotten it to you earlier. No, it's it's it's, again. It's sometimes again. This has only been over maybe four or five days as well, and I've been a little bit ill. So, but there's been a lot going on. I've tried to get get my own gears flowing. I've tried to get guests back booked in, Um, but I'm sure it'll be fantastic. And the reason why I like it is because just I mean, you sent me the blurb, and that in itself, um, absolutely love it. Um, So let's talk a bit about it. Um, what, what, what's the, um, the general topic of the book? Well, <laughs> for it, it, it took me 30 years to write. Wow. So That's yeah. crazy. And, um, I was working on my master's in mental health counseling and I started writing, uh, you know, as a paper, I was writing for a class and all of a sudden I started writing the words, there is emerging on the face of the earth, a new human, an infinite human. And so I thought, well, that's weird, you know, because I kind of, that's the way I, when I write, I kind of channel information, you know, so I like, I was like, wow. And then after that, my computer was struck by lightning. Wow. <laughs> and, and so, I, but the idea, it's it stuck and it started to unfold as a, a book and also my own spiritual journey. And it led me to meet my spiritual teachers you know my and my husband and i who's my twin soul it led us all around the planet and into uh i guess supernatural phenomenal experiences um higher dimensions of reality so it, you know it's infinite but also very human too and it's it's a, it's a it's a story it's a love story you know it's um and you know it's got great heartache because i lost my twin soul but you know we had a great passionate you know love that i think only twin souls can really have um and um it was just a lot of learning some very hard lessons you know we call them dark nights of the soul you know and you yeah, just yeah. Don't think well, you're sorry, gonna survive. well i'm sorry to hear that you know that i mean but at least it sounds like you're making a positive of it if that makes sense Oh, yes, it is a triumph. It's a, it's a hero's journey. Yeah. What can you say? It's a hero's journey. And that's what 
the, sto the mythic story structure that Joseph Campbell, I don't know if you're familiar with him, wrote so eloquently about, you know, it's the this, it's this story structure that's inherent in every myth, every fable, every novel, every film, yep. you know, it's Luke Skywalker dealing with, you know, the dark side and then, you know, triumphing and Frodo, you know, carrying the ring, you know, and dealing with, you know, all that he had to deal with. So, you know, it's, it's, it's our life stories, everyone's life stories. Your journey too, my journey, well, our journey. I mean, that is a, a great way of putting it as well, even as examples, because you're absolutely correct. You know, most, and I'm a big fan of fables. I look into, I look into a lot of stuff. I look into a lot of, um, you know, pre-civilization stuff, um, like the rise and fall of civilizations. I look into old Greek myths and tales. You know, I'm a, I'm a pagan myself. Um, so I believe in a lot of older gods. Um, I'm not to say that I'm against Christianity because I also believe that there probably was a, a Jesus. And I think that a lot of those tales are somewhat true. I also believe that there are, some of them were probably spun upon old tales, but I believe that all of them are probably much older than what they are. Um, but it's, it's, it's funny that you, that you talk about the, um, cause again, when I've looked through some of your stuff, higher dimensions is one of the things that I want to talk about, but uh, let's just talk about your other books, because um, you've you've got four of the four of the books. You know you're internationally published. Um, so what made you become a writer? Well, you know, I, I think I started by saying I, I really have done. So, I mean, I've done so many things. I've done almost every job possible. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> being an actress, a filmmaker, a flight attendant. I mean, oh, wow. I've done it. But I call myself a divine storyteller. So I like being a storyteller, best of all. And I've been writing, gosh, since I was like, you know, three or four, since I could hold the pen and, you know, form a sentence. Uh, I, I started my children's book, The Magical Mist, at eight years old. I started to write it. And that's, and I have a few children's books. And actually, today I just got all my books. I have four that I've actually. Uh, well, now there's five on my website, but I have um, about 30 stories that I have to, I just haven't had time to get them formatted now. So now is the time in my life when I'm going to focus finally on getting writing. I think, I think the planet's ready <laughs> to hear my stories. <laughs> and plus sense. now people are going more on the internet, you know, too. So um, I think it's the time. I just, the timing wasn't right. Well, people love stories as well, because people always want to connect with people, you know, and that's what's really important. And some people can just have the best stories. Some people have really tragic stories and sad tales, but people can always connect to them, connect to them. Some people will connect to them in different ways. And, but most, most of the time they always gain a positive out of it, depending on the story, you know? And probably depending on how it's told, mostly. Some people can tell a horrific tale and make it really comical, you know, and for some for some reason, you know, that's a great skill. I wouldn't say that uh, I'm very good at that, but <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Um, one thing I was going to ask, um, have, you had, have you got any audio books out there? Because I tried to um, find some. I'm going to do next. That's what I'm going to do next. I, um, you know, I had a film school in Florence, Italy for many years. And then um, I kind of got an intuitive, you know, I was guided, let me just say, because that's pretty much how I move <laughs> all over the planet to come down here to Sicily. So I'm in Sicily. And thank God I did, because, you know, we had really bad lockdown in um, in Italy and it's really destroyed the tourism and the economy and all my students were international students that would come to Florence and we'd make films. So um, I'm fortunate though because now my this is the phase where I'm going to take all I have all my film equipment actually I have it like over there <laughs> in my little studio oh, wow. and I'm going to do you know start doing more um, with my YouTube channel and making everything into an audio book. And I think also, cause I've always wanted, I have a lot of screenplays. I've written like 30 screenplays and I spent a lot Jeez. of time in Hollywood. I talk about esoteric Hollywood and what really happens there <laughs> and how I chose to leave Hollywood and do it in Florence to get out of that, um, what I call preemptive programming of Hollywood. Cause there's a, a lot of agendas behind yeah, yeah, yeah. what 
<laughs> well, I've heard some stories, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know just the smoke and where there's smoke you know there's fire so there's a lot of stuff that's built that goes that's coming out now i think so, so yeah i'm gonna be doing uh, uh you know audio so i'd love to what i did at my film school was i took students and I, what i tried to create was consciousness films you know films that were that had good stories i always felt you know, the first thing is you have to have a good story. So I really focused on helping the kids, my students connect to what I call their, you know, inner creative voice, you know, their, yep. and create their soul. Because I think you talked about telling a good story. I think what makes a good storyteller is when they're really authentic, you know, when they're really, it's coming from their soul, you can just get, you know, it's that connection, that's that soul to soul connection that, that artists can, can have with their art and, you know, filmmakers, storytellers. So I would love to see that happen again. Um, we'll see the world's well, so. I mean, there's very few films that are like that. I mean, from, I mean, I don't really know shit, but I'm from all the podcasts I've listened to from the pe from the few people that I've spoke to in that, in, in the game or, or who have been in the game, um, it's like, you know, they just all put their spin on stuff. So if you was to go in with your screenplay, there'll be, that'll be like a first draft. And then some, and they'll go around a room and there'll be changes and people will want to put in their bits. And, you know, it's kind of like, well, you're missing the actual transparency of the tale, you know, and that's, that's where it becomes less authentic and probably more Hollywood. You know, I don't know. Some nowadays, some companies are probably a bit different, especially with Netflix. Netflix are doing probably the best fucking work on the planet in terms of films. They've got a lot of good stuff out there. So I don't know. I don't know. They came out, you know, like I said, this book was 30 years in the making and it's something that, you know, this the word infinite human is so powerful. You're, you Now, yours is a human podcast, right? Yeah, human yeah. Book. Post -human, oh, yeah. It's almost on the same sort of same sort of wavelength. I was going to talk about that. <laughs> well, because it's it, to be infinite, and I have a whole chapter on infinite. Is you know, it's all that is, ever has been, and ever shall be. It's it's just that expansiveness, yet multi-dimensional. You know, nature, our divine nature, but yet we're still human. And, you know, religion is always kind of separated. It's like, you're human and, you know, you're this downtrodden, you know, beast of burden. And then, you know, you die and you're divine. And, that, you know, I think we're coming to a time where we can move up in vibration and dimension, frequency, vibrational frequency into this infiniteness. So that's what infinite is to me. It's organic ascension. It's organic technology which is open-ended, open, open, spiraling outward and never, never ending. And Netflix just came, no, I, I actually it was on Prime, but I bet it's on Netflix too. They just came out, just my book just came out like last week and they just came out with a movie called Infinite. Uh... <laughs> and they used the, 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 the infinity sign. Everyone thinks of the this, it's like a figure eight yep. falling up. But it's actually a MOBA strip. If you think about it, it's very finite. You know, it's like you can't escape it. You know, it's it's like this really prison matrix, which is what we're talking about moving beyond when we talk about moving up to the fifth dimension or higher dimensions. And it's all about AI. It's all about everyone starts to remember they, their past lives and their reincarnated lives. And this one guy doesn't, I have the stupidest premise this one guy doesn't want to so he's trying to kill and destroy everything with this technology and this other guy who's mark Wahlberg or something you know <laughs> goes into this thing where his, you know our re uh it, it goes into this water uh med bed type thing oh uh, i might have seen it you have seen it i think i have yeah i think i have it's all dark. It's very, I'm sorry, but it's like satanic Hollywood because it's all dark and all AI and all boom, 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 you know. And I'm like, oh God, okay. Infinite, spiraling upward, light, bright, organic, my cover, you know, if you see my book. And then I put it on Facebook and then theirs, which is that. So I don't, you know, that's why I left Hollywood. I just, you know, there was no way they were, they were. Well, it's always really um, strange because I, in terms of look, nowadays people when they're you know everyone's always wanted to cheat death 
I believe that has been pretty... Everyone's always wanted to do that since the dawn of time. You know, since we've realised that we die, I think we've always tried to escape death. But up until the modern day, unless there's some shit that we don't know about, um, the only way that it could probably be done, and that's what people say now, is through technology. But I think that if if that was the case, uh, and we chose this that path of technology, rather than what could have been thousands of years ago, and even up until a hundred, even to modern day, because we haven't quite got there yet. But it's like there's people out there in a debate at the moment where it's it's you know if we advance on and live forever, if like upload into the machine and uh, you know make a symbiotic relationship with it, then we'll live forever. But what if we just die and then we go into this higher form of consciousness and live forever? You know. And that's kind of the, the a good debate, really. It's a strange one. I've heard it on a few podcasts, and I'm I'd like your 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 take on that because it's it's wow. something that I think about a lot. <laughs> wow. Well, jump right into it because you what you just nailed is the choice that yeah. humanity, every one of us, is now facing. It's a choice. It's being offered, and I think I say that in my book. Choose wisely because it's only your soul that you're giving up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And many people have, you know, like I said, Hollywood's a place where a lot of people have signed their soul away. They'll, Bob Dylan even said so once. I saw him on an interview that you sign your soul away. So the question I have for you there's immortality, you know, and there's eternal life. Okay. Yeah. And we've been taught that it doesn't, that, 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 first of all, there is no death. Okay, there is no death. And I'll talk more about my book, but in my book, I prove it, prove that there is no death. And it's just a, tr it's just a change of form. So but we're taught to fear it, okay? So then we, are, we fixate on just one dimension. We're multidimensional. And it's great, you know? I mean, I like to have a good meal and go swimming in the sea here and, you know, all the things being human, but I also am infinite. So I like to surf the infinite yeah. i call it not the net the net which holds little fishies i like to surf the infinite because as you as you begin to access more of your nature it's just like we're on cyberspace right now but but as you begin to okay here i go as you recover your sim card your organic chip which is your does anyone know what it is? It's the Philosopher's Stone. It's, it's what Michelangelo was trying to point out when he did the Sistine Chapel and he put God in the center of the brain. It is your radio to all creation. It is your, your, your SIM card. Yes. That's what some people say it is, penal gland. Yes. <laughs> I mean, when you access your third eye, then you can. You are multidimensional. And then the second question I will ask, if you're choosing between the two, you can kind of tell where I'm leaning. Organic, non-organic ascension. Organic is infinite. You are free. You escape the prison matrix. The What they're offering now, AI, wow, I can become one with a computer. I can live forever. Yeah, you can. You can, you know, go anywhere in the net. And who is pushing the buttons? Who is in charge of you once you have given over your consciousness, your brain, your soul, because whoever commands the brain commands the soul, your body, who's in charge? Well, that's a good way of putting it. Whoever commands the body commands the soul. That's that's a very what? good quote. Like, that's straight up out of your mouth? Or is that taken from somewhere? Because that's a great quote. That's, Call me. <laughs> that's, a, that's a really good quote. Um I mean, I don't know. Like I say, I believe in a whole bunch of stuff, um, but I'm also one of these people that would like to to see this technological advancement at play, you know. But I don't think it's gonna. I think it'll be in the back end of my lifetime, like where my children are maybe. Oh, you'll uh, be surprised. I mean, I, I'd like to think that, but I don't know. I don't think it will. I think it will be in, like you know. I don't know. I mean, I read into a lot of stuff. And I'm a conspiracy theorist anyway. You, so, you are? Oh, absolutely. Are? Yeah, most of my show's built around it. <laughs> yeah, see, I just listened to a few. Okay, well. Yeah, no, you, you could have listened. 
You could I'm listen to the wrong ones. <laughs> Because basically, I've been skirting around the world. <coughs> full disclosure, and it's based on a lot of research, and per, but it's interwoven with my own personal spiritual awakenings and experiences. So um, the, the the question of AI. Okay, first of all, there's nothing wrong with technology. It's not evil, oh, no. but it, it has been weaponized, just oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. It's been weaponized. Uh, education's been weaponized. Yeah. Everything on our planet has been weaponized. So you have to know who's in charge, who's pushing the button, who's in command of well, our planet. If you was to make a guess, who would you pick? Because this is where, these are where I love my shows because I do my own little bits of research and I, I don't know who it would be, but I mean, people always go, ah, it's the Illuminati, it's the Freemasons, or, you know, some people fucking say it's nasa you know and they're pulling all the strings uh if you was to make a a wild guess what would you who would you say i mean it's hard it's hard to say isn't it you know it's is it the elites with all the money i don't know it's crazy is it okay i know this sounds terribly arrogant it sounds so arrogant but with all humility my book is all about this it, it's i'm not guessing at all i show it you know i tell it in a story because if you just say it it freaks people out but okay. i mean i've had years of firsthand experience with this firsthand experience and um you have to and since you like history okay you like history right yeah, yeah. oh yeah 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 <laughs> so we'll go there because we were infinite divine infinite angelic whatever 12 stranded highly evolved and beings, we were, we were before, and we have that in our memory, and we're starting to, some of us are starting to remember that, and these people are being called like wanderers, or, you know, light workers, or rainbow warriors by the Hopi, or star seeds, I like the word star seeds, you know, and we're yep. starting to wake up and remember, and I have first, I have memories, like, you might remember getting up and what you have for breakfast or something. I remember my lifetimes. I remember my lifetimes and where I live now. And we, I talk about the Canary Islands because my husband is from the Canary Islands. His okay, family. A couple of times. Yeah. Okay. So it is so obvious to me when I was there, I started having all these past life memories that, that Atlantis, you know, at the Atlantic, it's the sunken continent of Atlantis. And we visited, there's, in fact, his father is from a, a tribe called a Guanche. The Guanche people are ancient people that were tall, blonde. I mean, they look totally different than all the Spanish people. And, you know, they were just like, they don't even know where they came from. You know, they were just found on these mountaintops and they had all these technological skills like surgery and everything, but they didn't have any tools. You know, so it was so obvious that they were a highly advanced civilization that just got caught, you know, trapped on the mountaintops. Yeah. Likewise, Sicily is like that here. There's a group of people, they don't even know where they came from, called the Elysiums. So, uh, you know, well, I, yeah. so I cite all this. So there was an Atlantis. We also lived in Guam. And the same thing is true there, which was supposed to be the Pacific was all Lemuria. So at that time we were in what, okay, this is getting, is, is it, are you interested? Yeah, 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 <laughs> this is all my kind of shit. I'm literally, I'm okay. totally on board. Okay, so NASA, NASA calls it the platonic year, but you know, Plato called it the great year. Yep. And the great years, okay, the whole procession of the yep. equinox, or in the Eastern, the Hindi, they call it, you know, the Darwopian cycle, okay? But it's a great year. It's a year that lasts, what, 28,000? Yeah, yeah. Roughly. So the golden age is when we're in the summer, we're at the height, you know? And that was Atlantis. We were at our height. We were in this beautiful high vibration, you know? It's like everything they say for the age of Aquarius, you know, harmony, understanding, blah, blah, blah. And then we began to fell, which was a natural process, except it was augmented. It was, it was the, the polarities were even ripped more apart. And, oh, this is why I have this picture. I didn't think about it. But see, this is a, this is a painting. I painted. It's not the best, but 
it, in, in Sicily, <clears throat> it's a story about a man and a woman and she, he was a Moor, he was, he was black and she was Sicilian and they fell in love. They had this passionate love affair and she found out that he was married. So one day after they, you know, had their, you know, afternoon delight, she, <laughs> she cut his head off and made a planter out of it. Okay. And so all over Sicily, you can buy these gorgeous planters, you know, these heads of these two, these two people. So I put them as one to kind of heal that, that rift that has existed between male and female. I mean, face it, the war of the sexes, we're like enemies, you know? We, we, and I talked about this in my book, cause you know, when my husband and I first met, we were total opposites. He was a doctor, he was a man of science, and I was like a hippie, you know, I was like into <laughs> yoga. And we fought every day. We just, we hated each other, but we couldn't like, get, you know, it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know a lot of twin souls feel that, you know, it's like you love and hate the same person, you know? So anyway, getting that has to do with the fact that the Atlantis was much more masculine and Lemuria was much more feminine. You, know, you kind of see that in the Eastern and Western hemispheres on our planet. And it got augmented by external intruding invader forces, dark forces, I call them. And to a point where it shifted the poles because there was so much misuse of the technology, the crystalline technology, that it caused the continents, it caused the poles to shift in the continents to, to, to you know, and, and that's the flood that we all have in our cellular memory. It's that fear of the human holocaust. And we all carry it at some level. We have this deep, you know, fear of to our, and, and this played out during the whole, you know, plan, plan, scan, demic, whatever you want to call it, you know, the whole, that thing was going, so. Well, I mean, even, even uh, well, the thing is, even with the, uh, with the years where it goes around the cycles, is even that can, can be broken down further, because it breaks down into, into 12, obviously, the, uh, is it 12 or 10? Uh, obviously, the signs. It's supposed to be 12, uh, but it's actually 13. They, yeah, I mean, Zodiac has been hidden. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, yeah. They tried to ch change it a couple of years ago, didn't they? And say there was a another one in there. I think the that was to the weakest. The yeah, weakest. I think that was just to con to uh, make us conspiracy theorists back off from from working some shit out. But there's tons of like hidden mathematics within all that. You know, there's a lot of sacred numbers, and a lot mm -hmm. of people don't don't really look into that side of things. Uh, there's some really good um, documentaries on YouTube. Um, oh shit! I can't remember who did it now. Uh, I think it might have been Randall Randall Carson, maybe. And it was breaking down like a lot of hidden mathematics and stuff like that. Maybe it was him. But that was a fantastic thing. And I'm always looking into. Um, well, I, I look into everything. I'm a. I believe that we are. There is a bunch of high dimensions. I think that we can only see and hear certain of those frequencies. Um, I think that when we get fucked up on drugs that we break into those frequencies with a combination of them i think that some people naturally live on those frequencies also um i just think as humans with there's so many different variables you know some people aren't even prone to it at all because they don't care you know they're too busy working nine to five and just working to grind every day and their minds overthought to even give can you know just to give stuff that we're talking about even a, a second thought not even a, fir a first thought they just instantly dismiss you know and i think i think more people should be talking about stuff or at least trying um trying psychedelics as well is you know that's a that's a big one you know that's that's a big help you just mentioned something really uh powerful because it's what is happening on planet earth right now right now yep is we're in the midst of a frequency war, a war over frequency. Oh, that's cool, a frequency war. I know, I just like this. I know it's not cool what you're going to say, but I like this, the name sound. I've never heard well, that. That's what it is, it's a frequency war. And what's happened is back to the ascension, we are now coming back into the summer and naturally, organically, our earth is 
raising its frequency, which is when you said you can connect to these inner sounds, these inner feelings, you start feeling good, you feel blissful, you feel peaceful, you feel happy, you know, it's when, you know how some days you're just high, everything yeah. just flows, it's like you're in the zone. You're in, you're in the syn synchronization is, yeah. is, I believe, when that's at play. Everything works out. It's like if you're driving a car and every light's green and you yeah. get your whole day smooth you know exactly exactly Sorry, so that that's the higher frequencies and we're we're naturally organically going into that but the okay i'll just call them the intruders <laughs> the invaders the controllers the controllers who have who took hold of our planet back 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 you know after the fall and rearranged everything and encapsulated us into lower frequencies after which fall pardon after which fall sorry after well it's, it's, that's a good question because it's had it's been we've been caught it actually we've been caught in a time loop so it's been re, it's like groundhog day we've been repeating the same history over and over like the moba strip so after Atlanta, that's why nobody, the only historical record we have of Atlantis was Plato when he wrote about it. I, I thought Every, you meant that kind of fall. I, I did think that you meant the fall, the last big sort of, you know, huge fucking disaster kind of deal. I thought you yeah. meant that kind of fall. Yeah, that's, that's all right. That just, fall, just after that, our, after the flood, it covered up most of the, now they're starting to surface. They're starting to come up with, oh, the pyramids are much older than, you oh, know, yeah. 5,000 years. And, oh, we found these uh, civilizations, like our giants, you know, skulls and all these breadcrumb trails of the truth that have been hidden. I think giants have been real. I think, I, I'm, I think giants have been real. Yes. Um, one of my theories, and this is where, again, I said earlier on, um, you know, when people talk about what I believe in, I believe that like modern day times now, how we're fucking about with genetics. Um, and again, we've been cloning stuff since the 1990s. Um, I think that many thousands upon thousands of years ago, hundreds of thousands, maybe that's what happened to us. And, you know, we were, something came down from the sky, altered about, fucked around with us. Um, but also in that process created what would be now like, you know, the things we see in Greek myths, all these monsters and, you know, like centaurs and stuff that are in folk tales. You know, I think that a lot of that was probably real, but wiped out time and time again. And we were meant to have been that dominant race, you know, there's been a, I, 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 I mean, I, I could be wrong. I'm probably massively wrong, but that's what I, I'd like to believe anyway. I think you're right on the money. I think you're right on. Um, so I'm kind of going through my book here because I have, there's a lot of research and I rely a lot on Plato because he's mm. one of the Me few too. that survived because every, everything else is pretty much actually that when the burn, you know, the, the uh, library of Alexandria was burnt. And all that information was put into under the Vatican, it's right there. There's 50 miles of, of it. So all the truth that's been was carefully stored and documented for us, so we wouldn't lose our history, was was hidden and has been hidden. Well, they were and conquerors. Pardon? They were they were always the conquerors. It was uh, it was Alexander the yeah, Great. Yeah. yeah. Some some of the knowledge was apparently it was moved. There was some sort of deal. Um, between Cleopatra and um, Anth oh, Anthony, what the fuck is his name now? Yeah, I forgot yeah, this Anthony. last time. Yeah, you know who I mean. Yeah. I always um, Mark Mark Anthony. Anthony and, yeah. 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 Apparently, um, there was some sort of moment where they moved some stuff out of the the Library of Alexandria and took it to the Sphinx, which you don't know, you know, there's a lot of the space under there. The riddle of the Sphinx, the riddle of the Sphinx, because the Sphinx, the low the Sphinx are libraries upon libraries upon libraries of information too, that still has not been, been disclosed yet. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff, and it's going to surface. We're going to see it surface.
Well, the Great but, Pyramid uh, has a lake under it as well, which is kind of crazy. It's got ooh. a big, huge lake, and there's like meant to be no water in the desert. Yeah, right yeah. under there, huge, massive. I think you can drink from it as well. I think it's very pure water, which is kind of yeah. like, mm. you know, it makes you think after years oh, of bullshit education. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I know it's definitely portals, and there's a stargate right in front of the Sphinx, but a lot of these stargates and these things have been hijacked and our planet was closed off literally in what you know like the movie the matrix in in kind of a net to stop us from being able to escape once we dropped our physical bodies and created the reincarnation cycle which is not a natural cycle we you know we're not supposed to keep coming back and back and back and have our memories erased and not remember who we are and an why one. yeah I've not so thought about that hmm. that's a really good concept you've just fucking blew my mind with that one the reincarnation <laughs> cycle oh shit that's gonna take me down some rabbit holes this week <laughs> read my book That'll take you even further <laughs> oh no i will believe you me again after you know you, you sent it me and it's uh I would have. I was also um, in my in my computer while uh, you sent it me, so I couldn't. I couldn't really do anything because it's an EPUB, and I haven't got an EPUB reader apart from on my phone. So uh, I'll send you a PDF. It does. Well, no, it doesn't really matter because I, I I read on my phone anyway when I'm going to sleep. So oh, okay. what I'll just do is uh, again, trust me, we'll, there'll be some feedback on further shows about it. Believe you me, because okay, this is all. Well, I'm just getting it out. In fact, it's really not in proper format and the editor's getting it back and then i'm gonna yeah, put a print book uh, too so i'm you're just kidding me right at the very beginning no that's okay i'm not oh, gonna I'm really out yet there'll be no there'll be no heavy critiques don't worry I'm, I'm, trust me I'm, I'm sure i'll love it because everything that you spoke about is stuff that i'm heavily into so believe you me it's uh all good what are, what are the conspiracies are you uh on with because i mean we've just spoke about like even that you know ancient civilizations in a way and what about like modern day things i mean i've seen on youtube with a 5g um it's something that i wouldn't really say i'm on board with um i mean i just because i just don't know i haven't looked into it too much because most of the stuff that i'm focused on is like history and past and cults and you know the the occult and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. I don't really tune in that much, apart from maybe new technology, but I don't really look into the conspiracy side of it. So, uh, and again, so on your YouTube page, you've got some thoughts on 5G. I'd like to get into that, okay. just to give me some sort of knowledge. Because uh, okay. it's something that I've never really looked into, and I'm, I'm a conspiracy theorist, and I like to take everything as it is. Um, and I'd like, like a bit of information about that, just because... I didn't really look into it too much. Okay, great. Um, all right, so we're in a frequency war, and basically you understand from my perspective, if we were organically just left alone without any artificial stuff, we would ascend in frequency, and we would activate our pineal. We would activate what I call our 12 strands or our divine technology because in the fifth dimension and beyond, you know, we are what, what is called magic, okay? In history, we called these people magic. Yep. And they had, and I write a whole, you know, I think chapter on magic, what it is. It's that, mm. that language of our soul. It's that intuitive nature. It's what animals, you know, communicate and, and it's the way that a mother talks to her unborn child and it's the way that birds know to fly south and stars know to be born. It's, it's that intrinsic, intuitive knowledge and we have that, but we've been duped out of it. We've been, we had ourselves, like you said, genetically modified. Almost like, you know, you see these watermelons with no seeds now. Yeah, like, I mean, that's the Swiss. There's tons of stuff like that. It's Like I impotent, mean, impotent, yeah. infertile, <laughs> you know. And that's, okay, so we've been downgraded. We did have, I keep saying, our DNA is key here. We had 12 strands, not two, 12 strands. And in 
each strand, you know, has activations of your brain and, ena and enables you to do things that, you know, like telepathy or telekinesis or, you know, uh, manifestation, you know, instantly. I mean, we had magic. Far sight, you know? Yeah. Or so, uh, there's a few like that. Sorry, carry on. Okay. So, I mean, does that seem possible to you that we, that there are, we're, we're humans or could be humans that, that can do well, these, like, and, you know, well, that's which the thing is, um, again, I think that there's been some people out there that can because, excuse me, you know, in, in the uh, 60s, 70s, even beforehand, you know, mm -hmm. governments were running trials for stuff like that, you know, real, real trials as well, you know, mm -hmm. for trying to, uh, essentially look into enemy grounds and astral projection you know stuff like that i mean it's, oh. it's just and it's like pseudoscience but the fact yeah, that the military employs remote vo viewers all the time oh the yeah time. yeah Rem yeah. remote viewing as well that's what another thing i was going to get into there was a, ma a machine as well that was made yep. um called the um something chrono something and and that was apparently i mean i'll read into a lot of stuff chronovisor and it was like for seeing time like some yep. some guy had built this thing and it could essentially see moments in time and it was you know you're never going to see any fucking blueprints or patents but when it shows you know what it looks like you go oh it looks a bit freaky you know you don't quite know you know there's always been weird occult items over the years and Things that have even been seen as religiously, you know, magical. You know, the, the Ark of the Covenant, the fucking Spear of yeah, Destiny, you know. Call them the Christ players, you know, Christ beads, because that's what a Christ is, a, a Christ of light body. It's a light body. It's a, a body of a higher dimensional being. And, and a lot of aliens are, you know, we think of aliens, but they're actually interdimensional beings oh, yeah, that yeah. have higher frequencies. And when you get into the higher frequencies, that's where it's infinite. And it's also love and pure love, pure light, true light. You know, it's just the, all those things that we think are, oh, that couldn't be true. It's too good to be true. You know, it's like, and our earth is so fallen. And we, we live on a fallen planet. And I think people are getting to realize how fallen, how down, how dark it has been. Well, I believe that we have like, you know, this sort of baseline consciousness and then we can go higher than that. But then I believe that, you know, there are stuff on different planes as multidimensional sort of beings that don't really interfere with us. I think there is some sort of extraterrestrial things as well. I think if, if we're here and we're going into space, I think there's a, an advanced form of us that's doing so because that seems pretty logical. You know, and it'd be almost improbable to think it wouldn't be. We're here. <laughs> and you look into the sky, every single star is a fucking sun. And the, the numbers can just speak for themselves. Um, and I think that there's also probably a bunch of different beings. You know, people talk about... It's like I said, you know, there was... I think that we were fucked around with and there's some sort of moment where... You know, like, there were half-breed characters in history, you know, like fucking centaurs and fawns and just weird sort of creations that were part animal and part human. And, you know, there's some talk about it in the Bible a bit, because I've started to read that shit. I'm getting into my... For those listeners out there, I've spoke previously about reading it. We're getting there. Um, and there is talk about that. Okay, let me... Just I'm, what I'm trying to do is in my book. The whole point is to connect all the dots. So I'm yeah, that's what I'm. I like doing. But first, I want to get the 5G. Okay, so what it is is if we were left alone, and we're going to get to the intruders, the controllers, the 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 aliens, whatever you want to call them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then we're going to get to that. But first, I want to let everyone know what is going on on the planet right now, this frequency war. If we were left alone and not hijacked like we had were in the past and are now, they're trying to, we are ascending naturally. Yes, in the past, there were many people who ascended. There were many Christs, there were many Buddhas, there were many Krishnas, whatever you want to call them. But now 
as a whole collective, we would all be able to do those things. But those who have had us under their thumb, so to speak, under yeah. their control, do not want us to. So they are now putting, they built us a, a cage, a fence around our planet, SpaceX, Elon Musk, and all the other. We have constellations now upon constellations upon constellations. There's a lawyer here that that took uh, the complaints of I don't know how many thousands of ast astro um, astronomers because they can't even see the stars anymore. We're in such a <clears throat> space fence and uh, the military also has constellations up there that can control the weather, that can, oh, yeah, yeah. That can beam down whatever they want uh, during lockdown. And this is what I was talking about, but I was hijacked by the, um, by the New York guy. Uh, <laughs> Here in Sicily, they put 5G towers everywhere. I mean, I, I'm highly, highly susceptible and have been very attacked by it throughout the years because it's been positioned all over, especially in the U.S. in secret. And I have been, uh, it's something called 5G beam steering, which they can actually direct through your devices that um, can really, I mean, you feel, and if you look, I tell people, if you look at the symptoms of the virus and radiation symptoms, they're so similar you know you feel like a headache in the center of your brain you feel nauseous you have diarrhea you feel tired um you know i had to have all the metal replaced in my mouth and i take volcanic ash to get the metals out of my body okay so they can beam steer into you into areas i mean i i wrote a book about this too a long time ago called the chronicles of Merville, where they can actually direct weapons like while you're sleeping into your bedroom or something so it's the technology is incredible what they can do and it's weaponized technology and what they inject inside of you without getting political here actually fuses with your dna and it's got, you know, liquid metals into it that replicate and end up, you know, pretty much take, I mean, the health effects already, people are beginning to find out about that. You know, people are dying, basically, I'll say. But it also is a transhumanizing factor that, that fuses you with your devices. Okay, so that's my... Well, that's, well, look, that, that is the end goal, is symbiosis with machines. One yes. just point I want to quickly make out is, when you said about the watermelons, again, I write notes in my show because when, when you're talking, you, you, uh, and I love, I love to listen. This is amazing. I'm absolutely, completely 100% with, most, with pretty much all of what you say. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention that I haven't mentioned on my show yet is recently the UK had passed a law um, for GMOs, which was very, uh, very non-news. It didn't really get talked about much. And it was just around the time of when all the social media outages went down. And I think that people keep speculating as to, to why it goes down and whatever. I think maybe a lot of stuff went down during that time. Um, but I was like, hmm. And there was something else as well, but I'm not going to get into that because I want to get I want to get the real fucking data on this one. Um but uh, it was weird because I was like, oh, the, the people have been protesting GMO food in the UK for years. And now we're going to go with some of it. And it's like, hmm. Oh, yeah. The ruling was to go with it? Is that what happened? They passed a law that they could yeah, we're go Yeah, we're going for it now, apparently. Oh, oh, yeah. God. Which I was like, hmm, that's, that's, it's, it went very under the radar. Um, I've not seen anything else on it yet, apart from on the pages and some documents. So this is a, one of the best times to talk about it. Just for me, because I wanted to get it out there under the radar myself. Um, yeah, so it's a pretty shitty bill. You know, it's funny. I had a talk show <laughs> like you. I mean, it's just like you had a talk show back, uh, gosh, three or four years ago. I was back in Kentucky where my family was in, in the States. Oh, cool. And I interviewed the local health food owner. They had started a health food store. Actually, it was about to, back in the 70s, it was about to die, and then the Rolling Stones came through, and they ordered all this vegetarian stuff, and it gave them the, the lifeblood they needed. <laughs> but I, I, it, was, it was about GMOs, and she told me, even if just one person does it, the problem is the wind, the bees, you know, they cross-pollinate, and, and, you know, once it's in Europe, it's going to be everywhere. It's going to 
you know, castrate. And it's horrible because first of all, it's plastic. It's terrible food. It doesn't give you any nutrients. Animals, bees won't even go to it, you know, usually because it's, it, it, and it's well it's where it's where they want to take the planet they want they <coughs> want, to, want a hollowed out planetoid with no organic life no oceans no waters it's even written in revelations what they want but people think it's a good thing and they want the gods to come down god and be with the children and rule his transhumanized ai life forms that's their that's the controller's agenda Here's a, a real question because again, uh, I, I can uh, I can listen to you for, for a long time. But here's a question: Have you ever heard of Alex Jones? Uh, what can you? The, cons the conspiracy theory. It was a conspiracy theorist in America. Um, he hosts Infowars.com. I, I call him, I call myself a conspiracy therapist because I'm trying to help people to realize. <laughs> That's a really good term. I've never heard. A conspiracy no, therapist. No That's, that is a really good term, a conspiracy therapist. <laughs> but th the reason why I mention Alex Jones is because I'm a big fan of. Uh, you should look into him. He's look yeah, into him. Is he on? Is he on uh, YouTube? Does he have a YouTube channel? No, he got took off YouTube. Is deplatformed oh, okay. every. Is deplatformed everywhere. But. I when when I'm listening to you, I'm like, you need a goddamn daily talk show, like because I could sit in, like I, I tune into Infowars for for a reason because it, it, Alex Jones is 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 bang on with yeah, some of the shit that he says. I I did a lot of research with all these people. Of course, I love David Icke. David Icke. Yeah, great David up. Icke. He's he's another strange one. Um, but yeah, he's almost in the same field. Um, but he he does. I think that you're one of them people that need one of them fucking daily shows. I'd, I'd tune in every single goddamn day. It is amazing to actually talk to, talk to someone that is on this fucking same game and same fucking wavelength as me. It I is. Know how to do it because I do, I do feel like I need to, but I, I wanted to get into podcasts, you know. But you, well, that's all it is. Just a daily podcast, like however long you want to talk. I mean. Again, I, I tend to do long form podcasts. I mean, my longest at the minute is four hour 50 and it was a fucking whop off. Which was, uh, format do you use? Do you use like Podbeam or? I use Anchor. I, I use Anchor and then that, that tends to, that has been amazing because it's distributed me to Spotify, to Apple. It's done a lot of the work for me. It's put me on a lot of platforms where I've done barely little work. Um, well, so what I, I just do. YouTube channel. I mean, I have a YouTube channel. I just haven't gotten back to it but i used to do like healing i do reiki and stuff so i do healing videos yeah i've seen some of the videos that. yeah but what? it's a lot of work because you have to edit and put in all this stuff so uh maybe but i was thinking of doing a video and then making it a podcast too Can, you should yeah. well this is why i do it on zoom but if you just get zoom and then just get like uh even if you're just on a single screen and just record it you know you can still just then Put it in an. I, I use uh, a really rubbish editing program that does the trick. It's pretty cheap. It's called Screencast-O-Matic. I think it cost me eleven pound for a lifetime membership. You know, you can do mild edits. You can cut. There's no fancy bullshit. Um, it's pretty it's pretty simple. Well, um, you can do my podcast guru, and then I'll have you on we, my show. <laughs> absolutely, I would. Absolutely, I always got. I always, if anyone ever comes on my show, I always go back on theirs. And I've had a few people that um, I've told to start a show, and they have. Um, and I've, I've gone, gone on there. As much because all my videos were taken down from YouTube, and my Facebook account was closed. If you're on podcasts, do you get censored as much? Yeah. yeah. Well, this is where it gets tricky. I mean, I've not been yet, but it doesn't. I mean, even if they, they then do, it's you can just uh, there's plenty of other places you can upload it nowadays like vimeo and uh there's t there's tons that have got a lot more higher traffic uh, i didn't even know about some someone one of my previous guests well um, i hope i didn't get you censored <laughs> every time yeah, i talk well uh, listen if it does i don't give a shit this is what i'm here for um okay. but i think you should i think you should you should do a like a two hour you know a little 
because you way way upon everything that you're, you're talking about you know that every single thing that you've said has some something behind it it's not just a simple one worded answer and that's why what people love they don't just want to listen to hey what are you you know what's this and hey here's an answer and it's back and forth there's legitimate like you know you're holding you're holding your ground you know i'm like man i'm sitting here fucking intrigued so uh i think that you definitely should you know i wouldn't even just go uh i mean audio is the best way um but yeah go anchor i'd, I'd listen to it um I, I did go through your youtube videos um I, I, i'd looked at a couple one that i didn't look at because I thought, I mean, it was a short, I think it was uh, about two minutes, 19, something along that. Um, and the only reason I didn't view it is because I'd rather talk about it. Just like the, the 5G thing, but this isn't about the 5G thing. The video was about sex alchemy. And that is a, uh, a topic that very rarely comes up on my show. Um, I'm, again, a, I'm a pagan. I believe in a whole bunch of shit. And... Sex alchemy is one of those weird things. I believe in sort of sex magic, but I'm not really delving into sex alchemy. That's a, a different sort of category. I've not heard of that one. Um, so, do you want to talk about that? That'd be a wild one. <laughs> well, um, okay, yeah, I have a lot to say about that too. But uh, um, <laughs> hang on a minute, though, because I feel like I want to get this. I, I don't want to get you in trouble, but I want to first really let people know what's going on on the planet right now and i just want to tell people it's so important to take care of your health but mm. not the way they're telling you to okay because you know the everything there these draconian draconian mandates are not to heal you or help you okay but there is, I say, we are in a war right now, a frequency war. And, you know, I, I people might think I'm crazy, but I was walking that's just... That's what you should call your show, by the way. Frequency war. Frequency wars. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Yeah. But um, I was walking into the post office the other day here in Sicily. I'm here. I, I thought there would be... I'm so far away from 5G, but they put in a few towers. And I'm out in the country now where I don't feel it very much. I was walking in the post office, and I swear to God, I felt this, like, something hit me right in the crown of my head. And, I mean, I wear Sunjad. I do all this stuff to protect myself. And it just hit me, and I was, like, dizzy. You know, like, you're out at sea, and it's like the, the ship goes, you know, like crazy. Yeah. I had, like, vertigo, you know? And I thought I was going to pa pass out. And then I, I got I recovered and I just felt so tired. I, I just got in my car, could barely drive home, crawled in my bed and just fell asleep. And I posted it to my friends on Facebook. And I had like five other people say the same thing had happened to them. One in Australia, one in England, one in the States. So these things are going on, guys, you know, and you got to be really, you know, attuned to where you are, get out of a place, because this 5G technology was developed by the military. They've been using it in Iraq and Iran. They can crowd disperse. They can, they oh, yeah, can. I know what about that. And it's happening all over there. It, the space fence is now, they're, they're testing it. They're testing it in Hong Kong, you know, they tested it here in Italy. Um, they're going to see how it interacts with these injections that they've given most, you know, so many people, because that's going to be interesting. Uh, it's going to be interesting times. So, so that's, that, that's, that's, <laughs> be aware. Um, sexual alchemy. I write about it. Let's in, take a, a brief, because let's take a quick five minute intermission. Okay, again, take... I've been, I've been drinking through the show. So I just want to take a quick five minute piss break it's normally about two if that oh, it also gives me time to stretch my knees gives me a perfect time to roll pre mid show this is a fantastic one people absolutely love this fucking show this is the, one of the reasons i got into podcasting for conversations like this that are completely out of the box um, that you never, you never really get just walking down the street or going to the fucking pub. Uh, you never get these type of conversations. They are the best. Um, there we go. 
Okay. No, so I was again just uh, pre. Again, I'm normally pretty quick, but due to the fact of how much liquor I drink, um, I always have to go for a, a pre-show piss due to the fact that. Uh, I know. I know. There's yeah. I know there's going to be a good a good another hour's worth of conversation probably. So I was yeah. like, right, I need to. I, I thought to... I was having the hurry here. Okay, good, good, fine. <laughs> Oh, no, no. I literally, I was just um, midway through. I was like, I'm just skinning up people. Absolutely great conversation. I was like, this is what I do podcasting for. And I was like, because you don't get to talk to normal people. If you was just in a pub like this, these conversations wouldn't come up. You know, if you're, you're out doing anything, you, it's, it's a rarity. And these, this is what I did, do podcasting for, these conversations. Because it's exactly at my street. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So, I'm going to be a podcaster. <laughs> you, sh you should. I told you you should uh, just bring just just bring the energy that you've got to from, that you did from this show to uh, to to your own show. Just sit at a desk with a bunch of notes that you've got for for what you want to talk about and just blast them off. And I guarantee you'll fucking smash it. As long as YouTube don't be a bunch of pricks, you might have to come up with a different name and start from scratch. I don't know. Well, that's why I yeah I think you're right. On to do the podcast and put it on all the other platforms because you know youtube's just gotten too fashion i'd keep I'd, yeah i'd keep with your subscribe I'd, that's the thing though if you started again you, you know you've got a good amount of subscribers so you don't really want to get rid of them so i'd just start your own show and do it with a different name but just put them onto the same youtube account you know what i mean yeah just let, just let it blend in just, just start off slow <laughs> just start just uh just creep creep it all in just uh, cre creeping the uh, the conspiracy stuff, creep the conspiracy stuff in there very subtly. That's what I do. <laughs> Sometimes, maybe not this show. So let's talk about the uh, sex alchemy because that's let's a talk about sex, baby. That's a chapter in my book. Let's talk about sex, baby. You know, <laughs> sex, 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 sex. The 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 taboo, the taboo, the forbidden word. And why? Because the truth is, sex leads to uh, enlightenment. Sex leads to, uh, you know, ascension. Sex is what transmutation, as the alchemists call it. Sex is 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 you know, cr create opens the the third eye. It, it is causes the kundalini to ascend into the upper chakras and puts you in this incredible state of just being there being it you know being there being a christ being being seeing all just feeling completely peaceful and at one and blissful uh but it's been so co-opted okay and that's why hence we have this we have relationships where you know the masculine and the feminine, the wars between the sexes where men and women kill each other out of jealousy, out of hate. It's been co-opted into, um, here I'm in Italy, okay? So gosh, you know, what they, you know, it's, I write about, it's called mamismo. And it's the, I guess we call it in English, ma being a mama's boy, but here they take it to the <laughs> Yeah, where the mother does everything for the baby and the, the son and the son loves the mother and then the wife becomes women are either like a sainted virgin or the putana putana madonna the madonna the madonna or the prostitute you know marry the whore i talk about the two marys marry the virgin marry the whore so women who are sexual are you know are whores are are, are you know are sexual toys or therefore procreation. So I go into the whole thing of the divine feminine, how women, the misogyny has actually ruined the planet because our planet is pretty much run. I mean, come on, guys, it's run by guys, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It is. It has been since. I mean, this is one of the things that I brought up on one of my previous shows is kind of way back when things were a matriarchy. And then uh rome kind of came along and kind of fucked it up a bit uh in terms of europe anyway um a lot of old english druid gods are all female um rome it was a one of those things and i think it should have 
things were apparent and again things were more prosperous as well when when things were a matriarchy things were more prosperous more peaceful which was kind of crazy how all of a sudden after tens of thousands of years potentially especially in europe it turned into you know just just out of nowhere you know rome decided to go fucking crazy but then thousands of years you know especially during the salem witch trial kind of era you know and and all that kind of deal i mean that wasn't the romans but the inquisition they did the same they did the same yeah the inquisition was the same yeah same thing yeah killed over five million women alone in spain i mean we don't even yeah. talk yeah, I talk about the only place that I've ever seen women really, uh, you know, talked about in history was in a uh, museum in Prague, and it was a museum for uh, instruments of torture. <laughs> so, you know, and you're talking about the indigenous, like an indigenous or in England, they were the Druids, but, you know, most of, like a Native American cultures, you know. The women, you know, were the wise women, the, the, the crones, the older women who yeah, were yeah. wise. And that's more from our true heritage, the Atlantean, you know, the, the, the before the fall, I'll just say it. I love that uh, word, crown. <laughs> crowns, so that, but that yeah, means yeah, to wear a crown, you know? Yeah, so yeah. The crown is about the kundalini, because, and I write about this in my book, that when you are with your soulmate, it's really important to find your twin soul. When you are with your twin soul, first of all, when you first come together, you have lots to heal because you know like i said we fought every day because you have been carnated in many many lifetimes and plato back to plato plato writes about the gods that um the gods were jealous because back way back when ma male and female were one they were one being and the gods thought they were too powerful. So they split them into two and hurled them to the far sides, opposite sides of the planet. And they spent, you have to spend your whole life trying to come back together. Because when your masculine and feminine inside of you are united, then you reach what's called hergamas, which is the first foundation that you have to achieve in order to transmute in alchemy, in order to rise above duality, duality. And you, and then that's the triangle, the magic triangle, because the yep. triangle brings you above duality. And that's what the sexual, um, you know, making love with your twin soul, because you are one, you're really one, you're not two separate beings. And when you can come together like that, then the male's job is to help the female unfold you know, from the root chakra up through all, every chakra and all the way opening the heart, opening the third eye and going up, like I said, to the crown, the crone, which is like seven feet above the head, which I would, used to feel all the time. I mean, I would be like, wow, this is wild. You know, <laughs> this energy on top of my head, you know, it's amazing. So See, I've, never, I've never had any experiences like that. I've had a bunch of weird experiences um but that's where i think that there's a difference again you know one thing i talk about <clears throat> excuse me when you you know you talk about these uh you know when i spoke about multi, multi there's multiple dimensions and there's mm -hmm. probably things working on different levels and you know you, you said it in it yourself you know there's good and there's bad you know then i think that a, a lot of the time people that do things through meditation and do th things through heavy breathing and that have never that have been completely pure probably more are likely to tune into more um better working positive entities and i think that people that do drugs and do these fucked up ways of trying to get there tune into the bad elements and I think that that's probably a weird, legitimate thing. Um, it's something that I've experienced. I know people that <clears throat> do do a, have lived a better life than me, and do do like a lot of cool breathing, and they've they do a lot of shit, and they they get to different planes, and they've now later on in life they've done drugs, and you know they're like, yeah, it's almost the same experience. And I'm like, wow, hmm, that's kind of sucks because I. 
I, I got to that experience, but it was all terrible. It was, <laughs> it was, uh, you know, but I, I, I'm not all, not all, not all of it was terrible. I, uh, you know, maybe uh, six times out of ten, seven times out of ten, maybe. Well, you were. You we said all it. Life lessons. You know it. 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 So but it was. It was, all, it was all character building anyway. High five. It was. It was all, even the even the bad times. It was all character character building lessons. You know, as soon as I look back now and I laugh at it, I'm like, wow, that was super funny. It was fucked up, but you know. <laughs> you know, it's just a matter of like rising the frequencies, and you know, for me, I you know, I I drank, I smoked, I, you know, I did that stuff, and yeah, yeah, even just living in what I call 3D, it's kind of like 3D reality. Yep. There's just that just they don't resonate with me they don't feel good anymore you know I, you know i when i say to people you know it's not like oh you know don't do that do it until you're finished i mean i remember once I, you know i quit smoking and then when peter died i i started smoking again and one day i woke up it was either take a breath or take a puff you know it was like <laughs> you know and i just that's me i think a lot of people have to like just get so fed up with something they can't do it anymore and you know i don't drink i don't smoke i i breathe i you know i spend all my time purifying my body i spend most of my day purifying it drinking clean water because i feel so great the more i drop densities it's dropping densities and everything that you do holds you to lower frequencies but you need that until you can clear out and this is the key to ascension your dark, your shadow self. Well, that's where, like, people talk about shadow people as well, you know. Yeah. And, the, and again, it's like the same bad entities in a way, you know. I, I get, and the thing is, I, um, you know, it's the re there's, there was a reason that I, I did a bunch of fucking fucked up drugs, and most of them were, you know. I mean, I'm not saying that. Psych I'm, I'm still into psychedelics. Um, but something that's man-made, I'm not really keen, you know. Um, something that's made synthetically, mm, no. Um, and I, I realised, I mean, I was doing shit for years. And it just, at some point, you just do get sick of it. You're like, huh, this is, what's the point now? You know, to begin with, there was some crazy mind-altering times and Eventually, I was like, well, I've, I felt like I'd reached a peak. You know, I was like, well, where do we go from this? And now, then it become more of an addiction to kind of get to that peak, you know? Um, and that's why I quit. Sometimes you have to make those good decisions. But, you well, know. Let's just say from my perspective and from the fact that our planet is not the same, we are, the old finite Earth is gone. And then we have two, there's two choices, the AI earth or the organic ascension. Those are the yeah. two choices. And we are in the middle of a frequency war. So now it's not a good time to, to be, to use those substances because if you don't face your shadow self and clear it, bring it out of the closet, bring it out of the dark, shine the light on it and love it. You have to love yourself. You have to love all your hurts, all your fears, all your pain, all your sorrow, all your wounds. You have to love them to death. You have to do that. That's how you transmute it, by loving it, accepting it and loving it, forgiving yourself. If you don't, you leave a portal open for dark shadow creatures to come in and get you. <laughs> and that's, there's some weird stuff happening nowadays. <laughs> well, I, I, I believe that. I mean, I put, I've had a few weird moments uh, over the last 12 months. You know, there's, there was a moment where I've spoke about it numerous times on my show. Um, I've got two, I'm going to point this out again. I've got two cats, but the cats were out of the way. Um, I've gone upstairs, come back down, and there's like a, it's like I go down like a, you know, like an L staircase, and then there's like a thin hallway, and then like at the bottom there's like a, a there was a shoe uh, cupboard that was just pretty tall, you know, one of the ones with the pull down handles, uh, and on there was a jug, and as I come down, I'd seen the jug fell off, and then I seen this weird shadow go out the back door, and I thought it was the cats, and then as I look round, 
found both cats were just sitting calm as fuck in the same places. I was like, hmm, that was weird. Um, but the shoe cupboard had fell over, fell over numerous times. A bunch of weird shit keeps happening. In fact, here's a more recent one for my listeners out there. This was a weird one. And I spoke about this the other day. Um, not even on my show, but with a friend. Um, I was, like, sitting on a bed. Like, just on my own. It's very rare that I have headphones off. But I was just charging some stuff up. And I was just sitting on, like, the edge of my bed. Sort of, up, like, near my window. So if, like, my bed is against a wall. And the window's on that side of my bed. You know, I was just sort of sitting there on the edge and I put and like I felt like a compression on the bed. So I'd look round again expecting the cat and I was like, Oh, there's no cat. And I was like, you know, one of them just weird moments and there was a genuine compression on the bed, which was pretty spooky. Mm-hmm. Uh and then obviously I was like, hmm. I looked around for the cats, come outside, come for a smoke, there was both outside. I was like, Okay, that's cool, I know where you are. Gone back upstairs, went to chill out. And I was uh, just watching some bollocks and then heard this fucking rumbling of noise downstairs. And I was like, what the fuck is that? Like, just random pan-like noises. Like, as if some shit had just fell off my windowsill, like, in, in, like, the kitchen. So I'd gone downstairs just again to see if a cat, because one of the cats can open the door. Open the, uh, door. She just jumps up, pulls the handle, and gets in. And then, she, you know, she does whatever she wants. And occasionally she can cause mayhem. But again, I come downstairs, back door was shut, and there was just a bunch of uh, stuff on the from the windowsill in the sink. And I was like, huh, this was on the same day. And then I was like, this is fucking strange. So at this point, I go back outside for another smoke, and then I sit in my shed for two hours. <laughs> and wait for people to come home. I was like, fuck this. It was pretty bizarre. I'm not going to lie. Some when it, when it comes to spooky stuff... I'm like, ah, oh, we'll leave it be, you know? I'd rather... Well, there's a, it's all frequency. It's like being in the ocean. You know, if you go to the de- deep, deep depths of the ocean, there's like these, you know, one-eyed, fluorescent, evil-looking creatures, and then the more you come up to the light. So the creatures that feed on you, the creatures that have been commanding the planet, the, the people who are in charge of our Earth now have been feeding from these lower frequencies and they want to keep you there and as long as you're there you are food to them (laughs) that's that makes sense they need and the more you rise higher to the light they can no longer feed because they have to stay in the darker the darker world so that's how you rise out of duality through love through loving yourself through like sacred alchemy if you do a sacred sex or alchemical sex it is through love it's loving it's coming back together with your masculine and feminine parts of yourself you know because a lot of us hate you know parts of ourselves and you have to reintegrate all of them to heal them and to become whole or holy and that's how you rise above it. And that's why a lot of people are fighting, you know, because and I understand I was in that mask, anti-mask, vax, vax. And, you know, you don't, it, it, the freedom that we're searching is going to come from ascension. It's the only way we're going to have true freedom on the planet right now. We have to ascend above these factions and their, their gestalts of satanic, luciferian. Okay, I'm going to use the words. Non-human, you know, non-human, off-planet cultures that have come here and, and, and trapped us in the lower frequencies and f- been feeding off of us. And now I think in the States, it's finally coming out a lot of the child trafficking. But the child, you know, they're all like, oh, my God, you know, these children, the, 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 the child traffic and the pedophile rings around the royals, around Hollywood, around the elites, around Washington. Well, it's been it's been going on forever. I I went to a uh, island here called Mosia, right off of Sicily, where the Phoenicians, two thousand BC, the parents would put on masks and they would sacrifice their children to the gods. And, 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 you know, we I start my chapter. I talk about religion. I said the problem with the planet is religion. Because we first somehow we separated God 
from us. And God is everything. It's omnipresent, omnipotent. It's everything, right? So it's also us. It's in, it's in everything. God is, in, is the infinite. I call it the infinite because it can't be made finite. And it's in everything that exists in the earth. So if that's really what God is, then who were the gods? All right. And yeah. It's everywhere. It's Greek mythology. You know, the serpent gods were some of the first gods, and it's in the Sumerian culture. They're yeah. called the Anunnaki. The yeah. Muslims call them the jinn. Um, the <clears throat> Chichahuri, the uh, African, the Dogon tribes called them the Nomos. Uh, they, they've been called by all different kinds of names, but these gods and, uh, had many different, you know, faces many different animal faces and we find in ancient egypt we have like monkeys you know you have birds yep. and all that and you have this brotherhood of the snake that has been <clears throat> in every culture and so people are like oh you know reptilians i know david like it's a hard time for talking about reptilians but <laughs> re the reptilian <laughs> factions have been very much present <clears throat> In every culture, people have worshipped snakes. I mean, look at most, Mexico. Look at you know. I mean, every one of the most craziest things I ever seen was when I was a kid. I used to have top trumps cards. Do you know where where you'd have a deck of cards and it'd have like you'd have like an animal pack, and it'd have different animals or predators, and then there'd, there'd be like a, a row of uh, stats. And you'd weigh it up against somebody else's card. So you'd have like a lion, and then you'd pick like fierceness, 93. And then you'd have like, someone would have like a fucking, you know, a shit snake. And it'd be like, fierceness, 63. And you're like, ha, I'll win. And you take that card. Well, I had a, I remember having a dinosaur card deck. Uh, and I've still got a dinosaur card deck. Unfortunately, um... My partner Laura threw the card away because I used to make remarks about it, and I'll get into that in a minute. But the card, it was like a fake card that was like a reptile person in a in a legitimate. It was the one card out of like fifty two cards or however many you get in a deck that was fake. All the rest were real dinosaurs, and then this one card was like a humanoid reptile, and it was like. In the fact section at the bottom, it was like, this is what would have happened if we'd emerged with reptiles. And I had that as a child. And then as an adult, they did this uh, McDonald's thing. And I went like, as, and they gave these cards out. And I, I found it again. And I rethought about it later on in life. And I was like, huh, this card is pretty old. I'd seen it as a child and it's still here again. And I was like, maybe there are some weird reptile people. Because I just, and they're just secretly oh, hiding know. it in decks of cards. <laughs> I, I, I lead into this in my book very slowly, you know, but, I, I, you know, because the research is there about how limited our folk, our perspective of light is. So there are all different kinds of other beings that exist. Like you've said, you felt some pressure on your bed, you oh, know, yeah, it was weird. That are not visible to our naked eye, to the human eye. My, Kiki, who's under my bed now, she can see that. In fact, I had a picture of her. I uh, had an aura. A uh, Killian camera took a picture of our aura, and she was looking at it. You know, animals and dogs can see it. That's why sometimes they get spooked. Cats, especially. You know, when we're like, "What are you? What are you looking at? What are you barking at?" You know, and they see something. And so we we and we live in an infinite, infinite multiverse. So of course. Every animal, every insect has had some has had some kind of parent race. Okay, it's true. Get over it. You know, it's happened. Everything doesn't look like us. You know, and um, and you know, we this planet has been visited and seeded and by so many different species. But the problem is, we've had been, we've been uh conquered we've been conquered you know it's fallen we've been it's we we're a fallen earth and it's been conquered by a very negative satanic 
<clears throat> uh, actually they're the black suns, black sun reptilians, just very much like the Nazi black suns. If you, if you think of that energy that happened during the Nazi period, it's the same mentality of this service to self, selfish people, very masculine gone wild, you know, and, um, I, you know, we talked about that before my, my, one yeah. of my, one of my spiritual, my spiritual teachers were twin souls. And one of them was an ex uh, sergeant in the military. And he said, he looked at us one day and he said, guys, <clears throat> he called everyone guys. <clears throat> he said, guys, he met us women. It's the men who got us into the problem on the planet. It's the women, you guys who are going to get us out. So it's that loving, gentle, nurturing, feminine energy that needs to be grounded with the masculine, the divine masculine. So we need the divine feminine, the divine masculine. We need people who are of service to others. We need people who say, <clears throat> they don't say, what's in it for me? You know, how much money can I make over this? You know, with this black magic Babylonian money cursed system that's always thinking about, you know, what's in it for them with the banksters, because all now the Illuminati, everyone talks about the Illuminati and taking down the cabal, but that is a multi-headed hedra, you know, snake, you cut off one head, another one grows up, you know, gr grows back. I think you talked about well, cards. Before, before we get into that one, because that's another topic in itself, I just want to say, um, you know, he's talking about the women. Well, even then, in World War II, there's mm -hmm. many people that say that the women fought the war, you know, and that they won the war. Because if it wasn't for the women, especially in the UK, World War II, you know, who were literally grinding, there was fucking going and building fucking the planes and doing a whole bunch of shit behind fucking the lines and manning uh, radio towers and shit. And there's, there was... Like back in the day, people forgot about it. There was like posters because even then I look into everything and those posters went. And, and I remember being in school reading a book uh, about the women it's won the time, war, and that was the headline. The it's time for the women of planet Earth to wake up. They really need to wake up. They've been doing the work, they've been doing all the work. God, here in Italy, they do all the work in America, they don't get any of the credit. They do all the work anyway, but they just need to just move into their power and your power is in your softness, not by being like a man. The power is in the softness. My favorite card in the tarot is strength. It's this beautiful woman who's got this lion in this embrace. She's got the lion, but it's in a loving embrace and she totally dominates the lion. And we have to take charge of the, I call them womanini and women. <laughs> woman <laughs> little men you know to think i mean not everyone's that way because there are men who are stepping up into their divine masculine but i think it's the women who are going to be giving birth to the divine masculine mm -hmm. and raising a different type of male um, that we need and that's part of the new earth that's just part of the process but well, this is again you know it's, i think there's a uh... Wait, what was we talking about again? Before we, before I cut back into it, it was uh, the Illuminati. That's what I was going to say. You know, it's talking about it being a uh, sort of multi-headed hydra. You know, which, which you can't. Uh, I believe it is. We haven't spoke about cults, uh, and I'd like to get your sort of take on take on some of it, um, especially in terms of they, because I believe that there is a they. Um, you know, there's. Tons of clubs that very rarely get spoken about, and there's especially in terms of like you know, when you talk about the Illuminati, there's a lot of history behind that that people don't really know about. And I don't know, what, like I said, what's your take on all that? Just well, we'll get back to that. <laughs> Hey, it's pretty big, and um, it's hardest on you, you Brits, because uh, there's such a, a, a the lineage is so dominant in there. It's, you're so infested with it. But um, I really, I know I'm going out on a limb here, talking about the off planet 
factions of the gestalts of the satanic and luciferian forces but you really have to realize that they are off planet non-human entities that are of service to self you see them in the sci-fi fantasy movies but they're not fantasy because if it exists it exists it's infinite yep. and they conquer they conquer planets they conquer star systems they conquer universes and they feed off the louche or the negative emotions like i said they're bottom feeders you know and they have to get you in this lower space and they keep souls trapped there to feed off of them that's their job so what they do though they're masters at this they're brilliant they're brilliant and it's actually kind of uh, intriguing the way they do it because they are smart they they they, they conquer star systems and they leave representatives here on earth they're puppets, they're representatives. And we have historical proof of this. What they do is they have, they stole our <clears throat> royal DNA. They usurped us as the angelic royal beings, Christ beings that we were. And then they created clones through their scientific laboratories, creating a, what they call Anunnaki hybrids. So these were intelligent, but they took out all the heart. They had, did not have the heart and the mind connected. So you see, the, then they began, they became the pharaohs and the, the kings and the queens and the czars and the Caesars and the priests, the high priestess, that elite class. And it was through their divine right right? The divine right of kings, you've heard of that? Yep. The blue bloods, their bloodlines, that they pass this down, these inner genetics of being actually, and they interbred. So they became satanic psychopaths, you know, heartless people. And you see a lot of that, and excuse me, I hate to say this because I'm going to get, people are going to jump on me with this one, but <laughs> I can oh, say God. You see it a lot in the white race. You know, I am, you know, okay, I'm, I'm Anglo, like you. My, I, I, my, I come, my family sure. comes from the first British, uh, let's see, <clears throat> Jamestown, the first British colony, okay? So, but you see it in the royals because, you know, even you look at, at, at you know, Queen, Queen Elizabeth, <clears throat> my name's Elizabeth. <laughs> my name's actually Queen Elizabeth. Monroy means my queen, so. <laughs> but she is like, I saw her once trying to go into a hospital where people have been like blown to bits in a bomb. And she was just, you know, oh, I, I'm so terribly sorry. I mean, I, I felt so sorry for her because she has no compassion. You, you can see it's almost been bred out of this. It, it's not part of the culture. And if you go to any place on this planet, whether it's Australia, America, Africa, if a white man has been there, that the indigenous people are almost all but gone. I mean, look at the Native Americans. Well, look it's at true. Yeah. I mean, this is the one thing that, um, you know, even when I look back in history, you know, it's it's been a one-sided tale, mostly from Europe, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, other stuff involved with that the crusades for example you know that was a fucking war in itself which people very rarely talk about and that was a fucking hellacious war and and there's ton, tons more like it that people just completely just overpass just because of the modern day narrative that we're fed and you know there's a lot of s subjects now that you can't even really search for or that you kind of forget about you know, it's just because you just don't know. You know, there's the stuff that I, I've forgotten about that I've read about in books when I was in school. And then, you know, years later, I've gone, oh, yeah, I remember that. And then it gave me that memory back. I almost feel it was a, a reason that they shut libraries down. You know, loads, very few libraries around nowadays. And when you go in there, they're all normal books. There's no old school historical books in the UK when you go into a library. Not in modern day towns. It's all fucking non-fiction and biographies. 
and then a children's section where thing where kids go to play and they take up the space for x amount of time you know and that's that's pretty real that is that's what happens and i think that there's probably a lot of books when these places closed down that just got shipped off and maybe burnt because there's some legitimate knowledge in there that even to modern day people would have helped them a lot you know they're not going to cat uh they're not going to um you know category it all and put it all scan it all and put it on the internet there's no point it take forever you know it it literally take forever so i think it was a the, that was our modern day library of alexandria burning you know for real I think that there was a moment where between the censorship of the internet, all the libraries going out, mm, it's the same thing. It wasn't a fire, but did the same thing as a fire. Well, I think one of the mistakes that we're seeing today in modern time, which, um, you know, I mean, I understand people are waking up, they're getting very angry, and they're seeing, first of all, they don't realize that these 13 bloodlines have gone into all different walks of life yeah that's something that i'd recently looked into with the 13 kings yes yes the 13 mm. bloodlines the Merovingian kings but they in, in people thought during the french revolution they got rid of them but that's not true they just went underground and they took on citizen commoners names and you know it doesn't matter if a royal marries a commoner or if a black person becomes president they still are part of those bloodlines and they're all part of the same, you know, click, the same group. And they all work together and they follow the orders of the NAA, okay, which is the negative alien agenda. They, they follow the orders, all right? So we get mad and we see people like, you know, Bill Gates and we see people like Elon Musk and we see people, you know, like the Queens and the queens and the you know they're they're all just following orders though we have to realize they're the front people that take the heat because the real power behind it the real black hand mafia that like we call in sicily you know the black hand is you know with in the circles within the circles within the circles <clears throat> so if if people think you know oh, we have a big thing now trump's going to take out the cabal well, you know, they, they, they're just take, I mean, it makes you feel better to see these heads roll, just like during the French Revolution, everyone was saying, yeah, down with the aristocracy, and they were just sacrificing scapegoats, you know? <clears throat> well, the real power went under and is still with us, the Rothschilds, you know, the Rockefellers, it, that man and his money has changed the shape of medicine all of um, you know the endowments that have gone to all the the Ivy League schools like Oxford, Sanford, Yale, Harvard. You know he's he's funded all the scientific studies, and nobody's going to go against him. He's he's formed modern medicine into eugenics, what it is today. He's yep. him and the Dupont family have created all these chem chemicals, these chemtrail chemicals and put all the artificial ingredients in our foods that are killing us and in our to toxic, uh, you know, products that we use on ourselves and our bodies and our homes. It's all, there's, it's a conspiracy. Yes. And it's not a theory. It's, it, it's happening. And then you put that with 5G on top of it, you know, it's a, it's a wonder that more people aren't dead it's a it's a miracle you know it's a miracle i think well this is where i think i mean one thing that i recently learned about was and I, well i didn't really learn about it i mean we all we, we all know that the military is way more advanced than what they let on to the modern day people that's that's a fact it's always been a fact yeah. um but i'd recently learned about well it come out in the news about hypersonic missiles um which again if you're now going to launch a nuke that hypersonic is going to take it out you know wow. and i learned about a, a bunch of others and you know hypersonic it, it, it's legit and then i was also listening to uh, a podcast and i believe it was alex jones talking about it i think i spoke about it previous and he was talking about anti-matter bombs mm -hmm. which is some sort of straight shit out of uh the angels and demons you know dan brown-esque thing 
you know this um and he was talking uh, that it's a legit real thing and i can believe it because nukes were invented almost a hundred years ago in theory and they just they just couldn't be made but there was on paper you know and and i believe that then okay you get to the fucking 1950s they maybe invent something else and then you know old fucking uh nikola tesla you know had a death ray he had a bunch of stuff that got got missing and you never know what was in there uh tons of trunks that went missing just hefty amounts of papers um and you come to like the modern day now there's magic bullets where you can fire it and it'll go around and hit a target you know based on satellite guidance and a bunch of other wizardry you know so i believe that and this was again pre-thought out apparently a while ago uh but apparently there are sort of anti-matter sort of uh, bombs that you could essentially have that would have to be next to nothing in size that would you know wipe out almost uh, a third of the continent of the planet you know in, uh, well, yeah, this uh, this off planet uh, this has been off planet culture that is incredibly sophisticated. I mean, you know, beyond our Earth's sophistication and, and have really developed artificial uh, technology. I mean, they're brilliant at it. And then they seep it into like DARPA, which is the mm. American DARPA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know DARPA. You know DARPA? I know DARPA too. Yeah, de- defense. Reese, uh, I can't remember what it stands for. Yeah, uh, we all know DARPA. The people that listen to my show know DARPA. Trust me. Um, yeah. They've got some weird, weird, weird stuff going on. I've looked into a bunch of their their stuff. Um, some of it's very odd. Um, I can't remember. I rec- I mean, I listened to uh, the Joe Rogan podcast. Um, extremely good, uh, and he had. I think he had. Um, Mike Baker, who was like ex CIA retired, and on that show they was talking about DARPA. I mean, they spoke about it a few times on on the Joe Rogan experience, but uh, you know there was a robot on there that could uh, essentially go on the battlefield and clean up human remains. Mm-hmm. And they and they was talking. Well, what if it you know went crazy <laughs> and just started eating people? You know. Well, yeah, DARPA is pretty much behind uh this whole thing of the 5g genocide spacex uh you know hooked in with these uh, injections i was talking to you about and um i'll tell you a little personal story it's in my book too okay this uh this ties in with it's actually in my chapter it's called honey over pus and <laughs> it's really this concept is so powerful because <clears throat> A lot of people don't want to see what's going on, you know. <clears throat> a lot of people will, excuse me, a lot of people will listen to this and, you know, call us conspiracy thera- therapist or therapist. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going therapist now. I'm, yeah. I'm running with that title. <laughs> and I'll tell you what the problem with that is that unless you get it out, unless you see the darkness, not only around you, but most importantly, inside of yourself, It is like pus and it just keeps festering and you really have to express it. You know, you have to get it out. And this is a true story. This is what happened to me. Christmas Eve, last Christmas Eve, I moved to this beautiful villa. I've been waiting for a long time. And, you know, I I had to close my film school and I didn't know how I was going to make a living. So I didn't have a lot of money, but I ended up just getting money. I don't know how it happened. It just came to me. And um, I was, and I found this beautiful, beautiful villa that overlooks the ocean that, you know, is what I I saw when I first came here uh, about two years ago, I had a vision of it. And it was wonderful. I was so excited. It's all beautiful, modern, white inside, overlooks the ocean. And um, I got locked. I went out that morning, Christmas Eve, to open the gate for the electrician who had to come in. And I got locked out. It was really early, six o'clock in the morning. It was really cold. I was like in my pajamas, you know, nothing. And I panicked and I got, I was also kind of upset. Long story, a lot of stuff from my mother because, you know, it was a mother wound thing. You know, I was missing my 
family. And yeah. I had all this dark um, grief that I hadn't fully addressed. I thought I had, but I hadn't. You know, you always think you have, but there's always a little bit more. <laughs> and I, it I don't was, know what you mean. <laughs> Yeah, it was hurt, wounds, feeling alone, also getting angry that, you know, the world wasn't waking up enough, fast enough, you know, and it was all these emotions. And so what I did was I kicked the glass door to open it. It didn't open, kicked it again. I kicked, I kicked my foot through, I pulled it out and I had a gash. I thought, oh, damn, I didn't hurt, but I thought, oh, damn, I hope I don't bleed to death. And I made a tourniquet. I had, I got in this house, I called the ambulance and the whole nightmare started. It was Sicily locked down. Medicine's not very good in Sicily. So to make a long story short, I ended up waiting a week because nobody could, I, my, I had severed my tendons. I didn't know it, but I had severed my tendons. I needed an operation in Sicily during lockdown on Christmas. Christmas here lasts like a month almost. I mean, it lasts like from the 26th to the 5th. I finally <clears throat> ended up in a private hospital at where I had to pay, I paid. And the name of the doctor that operated on me on New Year's Eve was, his name was Dr. DARPA. Wicked. Wow. Dr. Yes. And Dr. DARPA made a mess of my leg. See, this is where you <laughs> up to the shadow those shadow entities got in and then i got a terrible infection i went home i was i i had just moved here i didn't know anybody i had no help and so i was at home and my wound was filling full of pus every day more and more <clears throat> i went back to darpa and darpa said oh no that's good pus is good just rub honey over it just rub honey over it so oh, i was at home going Oh my God, I, were gonna, I would have lost my leg, probably lost my life, but I had divine intervention. I had like Gwen, uh, this nurse from America, tell me what to do. Serena, a friend of mine who flew down here and gave me the shots and helped me. And then another friend of mine, Susan, who helped heal me, you know, cause there's always help, but you can't write, move honey over pus. And the point is the cabal, the reptilians or whoever, the bad guys, <clears throat> They're out there, but they're also inside of us. You know, as long as we still are having these hurts, these blames, this anger, these emotions that pull us down into the lower frequencies, we're food to them. You know, we're, we're, we're part of their, their loose feast, as you call it. That makes sense. Do you want to take one more quick little intuition <laughs> and then we'll do one more section because Okay. This has been fabulous. Um, I, I want to keep it going for maybe another 40 and then we'll uh, I want to uh, keep this one rolling. It's very good. I'm super fucking on this one. Oh my god. I'm... And we're back folks. Uh, again, this is uh, one of the one of those long shows. Uh, absolutely uh, loving it. I think this needs to be a regular regular guest um d definitely a regular guest um because these this has been one of the greatest shows i've had this month so far this has been fantastic thank you uh no it's honestly this has been super on every fucking level that i work on uh it's just you're sorry really that easy i to talk to <laughs> say that again i said you're really easy to talk to <laughs> <laughs> this is why my show works i, I mean you was kind of fret you was fretting a little bit before the show and uh i said you'll be fine trust me <laughs> uh one thing that i want to get into is uh have you ever done any spiritual sort of experiences had any spiritual experiences and uh got in touch with the clockwork elves because that's one topic that is very that rarely spoken about with what the Clockwork Elves, have you ever heard of those? Yeah. Oh, that's that's kind of a wild one. I would have thought you'd have <laughs> had more to say on that subject than me. Um, so, maybe it's just because I've done like DMT and had psychedelics. Have you ever done DMT? What's DMT? Uh, 
di it's a it's a psych I can't remember what it stands for now. Dimethyltryptoline. Is that like um, LSD? LSD? Okay. It's kind of, but you you essentially you smoke it, or it's in ayahuasca. Oh, ayahuasca! Yeah, I've heard of ayahuasca. No, but I, when I was younger, when I was in high school, you know, I did I tried all that stuff. <laughs> But one of the, the things that seems, I don't know if it's, uh, I mean, some people believe it's a bit like that mandala effect where, you know, you believe something, if it is what it is, you know, like there's tons of, tons of uh, examples. But the thing with uh, the DMT clockwork elves thing is it, it could be like a mass hysteria. You know, one person says something and then someone else something else. But, but, but there's like this, another one of these sort of entities that are um, almost like, again, they're like, I don't know. I mean, the best way that I can describe them, I've only talked about them a couple of times on my show, is that they're like the, um, the geometrical makers of space and time is the best way that I can and put them they they sort of build reality they put put shit together and i don't know it's very weird um if you've ever done dmt you or ayahuasca a small ayahuasca trip you know with a shaman i haven't done an, an ayahuasca one yet but i've done dmt years ago um you you'll know what i'm talking about but there there are there's a lot of um sort of you know, Google content that you can look into about them. It's kind of shocking that you've not heard of those. They're they're pretty. Uh, well, yeah. Pretty I, then let me let me tell you what I think about that because yeah, I've tripped before, and it it what it does is it stimulates um, you know aspects of your brain that we don't use because we use only three percent of our brain. So it actually gives you um, help. It's you know to feel what it's like to be the way you God created you to be. As I said before, as I call infinite humans or Christ-like bees, it, it, it's like having your 12 stranded DNA, you know, re hardwired. So you could, you know, I like saw all my auras, rainbows around me. And, you know, you, you have all these experiences that we think are supernatural. I really, really want to say that if you feel called to do ayahuasca or something like that to try it, I think fine, you know, do it responsibly. But it's oh, yeah. not the ticket there. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm not going to be popular on this one, but smoking pot. No, no, no. I think you, I think you will be. Yeah, it's not the ticket there. Um, you know, I mean, I'm glad I did it because I saw, wow, okay, I, I see. I'm thinking out of the box now, you know. But I, I do that on my own now. You know, I'm, I, I spend. Actually, I touch down on what I call 3D Earth very rarely. <laughs> you know, I my whole life is uh, I spend a lot of time on 5D Earth. Um, you know, I have a home there. I have a life there. I'm married. <laughs> so, <laughs> strange, but you know, it, it took me a long time to get there because when Peter died, you know, it was terrible, terrible. Like, oh my God, his body, you know, and, and physically to lose, you know, your lover, your husband, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was too, oh, I really had, you know, just um, hard, 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 hard time, you know, really hard. Yeah, I, could, I, I could somewhat imagine. I've been, I've been in some shitty scenarios myself in life. And it was, um, I was lost. I was lost, you know. And in fact, I even woke up in a rehab unit because I've been taking sleeping pills because when I slept, I used to, you know, Peter used to come to me and I'd say, oh my God, I had this terrible dream. I dreamt you died. You know, I'm so glad you didn't die. And, you know, I would be hugging him and he'd just smile and, because he was always lucid in his dreams, even when, when he was still uh, in the physical. And I wasn't as good, you know. I was, I was not... I'm a very lucid dreamer. I, I I actually enjoy it. I enjoy. I really enjoy sleeping. Yes. But I, I can very rarely sleep, and it's a problem. I'm I'm like a half insomniac. Um, I really that? enjoy oh, sleeping. Oh, oh. Yeah, that's why I took sleeping pills. Now, thank God. Yeah. Sleep, and I love it. I have lo I have such incredible dreams. But um, you know, it's Mine are mostly the same. They're always the same sort of buildings. It's like uh, I've spoke about it on a previous show. 
Um, I'm, I'm like always in this building that's almost a hospital-esque hotel, which is very strange. It's sort of weird cross-references between the two. Uh, there's always weird elevator moments and some stairs. Always some weird sort of moments of running or interaction. Uh, I'm always trying to find stuff as well. It's always like a weird scavenger hunt. Uh, a lot of numbers are always involved. Some weird counting sometimes. It's very strange. Um, occasionally I'm like, I wake up and it's a bit of a nightmare. Sometimes I wake up and I'm like, man, where are we getting to on this? And uh, I try and plug back in. Sometimes I, I can, which is very, I find it very cool that I can do that. Um, but it's uh, very rare that I can get back to sleep. So it's uh, very... I think as you, for me, as, as, as star seeds, you know, as people start awakening and really committing themselves to service, you know, they're kind of tired of, I mean, you know, like for me, I've lived in, you know, I've had a, I've lived all over the planet. I've had my dream home. I've had a house with an elevator and a penthouse in Honolulu. I've lived in, you know, trailers on Indian reservations. I've lived everywhere. And, you know, you just, it's not that you become a saint, but you just like been there, done that, bought the t-shirt and burnt it. So you don't keep thinking, what do I want for myself? Cause I've had, I've had all my wish I had as, you know, my bucket list checked off. So, so you're like, okay, what's next? What's next is what, what can I do for the planet? You know, what, what, why did I come here? What's my mission? What's my soul mission? So yeah. as you do that, your dream state becomes actually school because you are actually, taken to be taught the things you need to learn to do your job on earth and you get and you're you, you're back you always has you're always taken care of you're always because you're <clears throat> working for what i call upper management you know <laughs> well, i mean it's, it is strange because i used to have the dream less frequent but most of the time it's very very frequent like it's always so bizarre. I mean, even this, today I had the same thing and uh, I woke up and I was like, I went for a couple of smokes and I was like, I wanted, I wanted to just go back to sleep. So I wanted to see what the score was. Um, this, I'm very, I don't know, there's some, some weird shit to it with this lucid dreaming at the moment. I'm not quite sure what it is. Um, some part of me believes that it just, I don't know, the world just wants me to sleep, you know. There's this weird sort of moment where it's like, hey, you're doing all this stuff and you, you're getting things done, but you just need to sleep for a bit, you know? Well, and it's very I, weird. I get that thought. It's very strange. You, you need a lot of sleep. So, you know, it's mm. great to sleep, to rest, to let yourselves rest. But also, if you're lucid, maybe the next time that you wake up in your dreams, you can say, hey, I want to meet my guides. Yeah, I mean, it's so strange because I've, I've always tried, there's been some moments where it's just, like I say, it's not the same every time. There's There's been moments as well where I've been able to, again, it's got very weird and I've gone down these like multi-level fucking facilities and shit and it's been very strange, like really odd sometimes to the point where that's when I've wanted to go back in there because it's... it's I mean, again, this is what I, when I first, I spoke about it about three times now. And the last time I spoke about it, it was, uh, the first time I did, I was like, oh, it's fucking, this is weird. And then the second time I was like, yeah, I don't, and this happened. And I went down this little fucking elevator thing and I'd never gone down there before. And there was some flooded buildings and shit, which was kind of strange. Like the flooded rooms and I tried to go through and it just wouldn't allow me, which was so bizarre. And th th that was the last I'd got and had I dreamt about that place. And then lately I've been back there again, but I've not quite got to where I'd wanted to go. It's almost like the same kind of dream, but it's not the same sort of story, which is kind of weird. It's strange. I'm a weird, weird. There's something very strange with dreams. And I'm, I always love hearing about people's dreams. I always love to go, oh, that's, that's kind of cool. And I always like talking about them because it's so weird for certain people. That's, mine are bizarre. That may be the real world and this may be the dream. So. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so, okay, I think we need to wrap up here because um, uh, we got like five minutes. So, um, well, yeah. 
I guess I want to just say, uh, you know, I know a lot of people don't read anymore, but if they uh, want to read my book, The Infinite Human, it's on my website, infinitehuman.com. I just put it up there. It says the ebook, and I will have print books available later. But right now, I'm kind of keeping the energy close and wanting to just build it slowly. I also put a forum on there so people could ask questions about it, you know, so we could talk about like the things we're talking about now, like dreams, you know, like supernatural yeah. phenomena, which I didn't really have a chance to get into, and the true history of our planet, you know, who's really in charge of it, you know, what's go really going on behind, underneath this, uh, the lies, the scandemics, and, uh, you know, which, what you're choosing, ascension or descension in terms of being part of the AI and passively consenting to this uh one world tyr tyrannical um, technological <laughs> control that's that they're pushing on us right now under the new world order reset. So interesting times we live in, definitely times to be There's talking. Certainly is. <laughs> um, well, this, is a, this has been one of the funnest shows I've had in a while. Uh, it has been, again, there's a bunch of stuff that we could probably get into that I've not got into at all yet like you said the uh, paranormal stuff i haven't even got into that remotely and that's a uh, a big one uh especially with the paranormal uh there's a bunch of occult stuff that we could probably get into so yeah. what i will say is like we said in the midway through the show is i think you should do a podcast um i think we should talk about it like off air and we'll i think you should just do it and i'll come on the show I'll be your first guest. We'll talk. We'll talk some stuff. Um, I'd absolutely love to watch watch it every day. It's. Um, I think there's there's a a very good amount of people that would heftily listen to what you have to say. Um, I think it's if you growing, I think more and more people are starting to want to tune into this kind of. You know, they're getting sick of the same old, same old pub grub <laughs> gossip or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's ab absolutely true. It's true 100%. And then. Meat and potatoes. Um, uh, but I mean, we've gone, we've gone over a bunch of subjects. And uh, even if you don't launch a podcast, uh, you're more than welcome to come back on at any time. Oh, I'd love to have you on. Uh, I'd love to have you on as a regular guest, like. Uh, a mass of people that are because this has been super fun where can people and this is the most important thing where can people follow you and where can people check you out the, I, the most important thing is i really want to get people to my website infinitehuman.com because you know my facebook page has been uh, terminated i had to start a new one and my uh, youtube i i have a youtube um infinite human productions uh but that's been censored. So I'm I'm just trying to get everyone to just subscribe to my website, at least that, infinitehuman.com. Then, you know, I'll be sending out, uh, I do blogs. Um, I'll probably put this on my podcast, you know, with my blogs. Yes, ab absolutely. Everything. I do um, newsletters. Uh, and then I'm going to have a forum so that people, we need to be able to talk uh, freely without censorship. This is so vital right now because you can't, heal in lies and that's what we all need to do well this is kind of why i do my show and i i'm a thousand percent transparent nothing i've ever said has been a lie there's been yeah and i don't you know even my opinion sometimes i like to chat some shit you know some of my opinions uh people will think i'm mad anyway but i'll go hey it's just an opinion well, but you know, you know, we need to know that what it is. what's going on around us, you know, because mm. people are not being able to make uh, responsible or respond properly to take care of their health and, and their and their body, mind and, and spirit, you know, and, and so we need to be out there talking about what's really going on in, on the, in the world and inside of ourselves. So where can I get... Yeah the podcast are you going to post it on facebook or we um well I'll, I'll, po I'll post things on my uh i post things on my youtube uh i post things on youtube uh also on patreon this is about the first time i've done a shout out uh on spotify on apple uh i may mostly post straight to anchor um this show 
I'm pretty sure, well, I've got a minor bit of editing, which is just my two <coughs> piss breaks, um, which was me, by the way, people, you know, and for that Hollywood director we spoke about in the previous post-show, fuck that guy, because uh, none of this is going to be edited, apart from my piss break. Uh, trust me, you'll see, I think I was about mm, two minutes, so we can minus four minutes off the show, at least. Trust me, if if that, four minutes. Um, I don't censor anything. Um, I think that everything should be said. I think that a lot of people, uh, whatever your fucking life is, that you, you should just tune in to, to anything. You should just get a different opinion. And whether you think it's right or wrong, hey, at least it boasts and boosts up your uh, previous opinion. Or maybe changes it, you know, you never know. Well, listen, this has been the Post Human Podcast. We've been here tonight with Elizabeth Mumroy. It's been very, very fun. Um, and we'll catch you next time, people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And will you, can you send me a copy of it, too, so I can like download it, load it on my website? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll do that. I'll do that anyway. Don't worry. Um, again, I'll do a little post show. So don't worry, we can talk about that in a minute. <laughs> Catch you next time, people. Thank you very much.